In this video, we are going to be taking a look at Authentic Audio by Ginger Audio. So what is Authentic Audio? Well, Authentic Audio is real-time, high-quality audio streaming plugin from your DAW to anywhere. And this is available in VST3, AAX, and Audio Units plugin formats. In addition, this also works in supported web browsers, both on desktops and mobile devices. And we're going to take a look at everything today. So let's hop over to Studio One, and I'm going to double-click to open this plugin. So if you're collaborating with somebody else who also has authentic audio, if they send you a session link, a URL, if you have that in your actual clipboard, notice over here, you can click the join session and it says you need a valid link in your clipboard. If you have a valid link, this will automatically connect you to somebody else's session. But if you are the one who is creating the session, then this is something that we can do on our end over here. So we have some basic options to give the session a name. We could also password protect this if we wanted to. This is just a default name. Let's just stick with this. I'm going to click Start Session. Now, as you can see over here, session link dash URL has been copied to the clipboard. Also, we can see some basic information in terms of the session name and the amount of connected users. Now, in terms of quality, we have options from 128 kbps, 256, 512. And then in terms of PCM, we're looking at 16, 24, and 32. Now, our latency options range from 0 0.25 seconds all the way to 2 seconds. So this is something that you can manage based on bandwidth and quality if you feel like you need to increase the latency a little bit as you move up to something perhaps like PCM32. That's something that you can do as needed. So we have already created a session and then this has created a unique URL link. What I'm going to do first though is let's click this video tab over here. Now this is going to open up a floating window and this will allow us to basically join the session. So I've given this a name and I'm going to join session over here. Now also notice that when we click on this window, it temporarily steals focus from Studio One. So if we click back in the Studio One GUI, you can see that the plugin is still open. So that's just something to take into consideration. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my basic devices. So we're going to click this little cog wheel and let's start with the microphone. We have the ability to choose a default microphone for your talkback source. And then in terms of the speakers, we can choose a set of speakers in terms of where we want to be hearing any talkback or audio coming from other people. I'm going to leave this set as is, and also we have the ability to test the speakers. Now I'm going to toggle over to the camera setting, and in this case, I'm going to choose my capture card. Or you could also choose any built-in camera that you might have on your system as well. For video quality, let's go with full HD, and frames per second and screen frames per second, I'm going to leave these both set to 30. Now once these are set, we can click the X, and this will remove us from this view. Now, in terms of aspect ratio, we have the ability to choose some different options, but this really only makes sense when we have more than one people on the call. So we're going to revisit this in a moment. If you need to temporarily disconnect or toggle off your camera, you can toggle the video and then we're temporarily just killing the video feed. And also if we needed a moment where we needed to maybe take a phone call or something, we could also mute our microphone. And then when we're done, we can bring these both back in and then we're back to being present in the call. If you want to react with any emojis, if somebody is playing a different section of a song or something and you want to give a thumbs up, it's very easy to just bring up the emojis or you could just put a heart smiley face or whatever you want and then we can close these when they're done. Now also, if something is playing and the talkback mics are temporarily muted, let's say that you needed to get somebody's attention. You have the ability to kind of be like, hey, can we stop there for a second? I heard something in the verse or in the chorus. So that's a very easy way to do this as well. And this will eventually fade away and go away, but you can do this as needed. Now, if you would prefer not to see your own video feed in this live monitor over here, that's something that we could do by clicking the toggle self view. This will just temporarily deactivate that video feed. But for anybody else that's on the call, they're still going to see your video camera. Last but not least, we have some screen sharing options over here. Also worth mentioning for the screen sharing options, the minute that you first instantiate authentic audio, you will most likely be greeted with the option to enable certain things. So for example, if we take a look at screen recording, this is something that I had to unlock and actually enable. And then in addition to that, we have the same thing for the camera, which I've granted access and the microphone. So this is something that you might have to do just once for the very first time. And then after you've done it, you shouldn't have to touch it again. 
You may also have to temporarily deactivate and then reinstantiate the Authentic Audio plugin before these changes take effect. So once we have all that done, we have a couple different options in terms of screen sharing. We can share an entire screen, but also we can screen share very specific windows. We're gonna revisit this in a moment. Let's now bring in somebody else on a call. What I'm going to do is click back in Studio One. Let's click the invite link, which has copied over a session URL to my clipboard. I'm gonna temporarily move over to a mobile device and I'm going to just click over here and visit copied link. We will allow this paste and we'll just give this a moment. And now we need to give our phone or our device permissions in order to be able to use the camera and the microphone. So here we have the camera, we will allow that. And we will also allow the microphone. Now here I can give a name, I'm just putting guest over here and now I can join the actual session. I'm just gonna temporarily mute my microphone cause that's a little bit too much. So now really quickly, I just wanna make sure that we're hearing everything. So our high quality audio is being sent out at 512 and at 0 0.25 seconds. Let's quickly press play. Disable this microphone again. And now we can see that in the actual GUI of the mobile application, we actually have the high quality audio and we have a fader and we have a mute button. Now, one thing to point out is that the actual audio level of the talkback is fixed and that will very much be generated by the level that you have in terms of your volume. And this could be either with the built-in speakers or if you're using earbuds or headphones or anything like that. That is very much fixed on the volume, but then we have the ability to adjust the high quality level by just sliding back and forth, or we can mute this altogether. Now I'm gonna make sure that the volume is completely down for the duration of this video, because I don't want any feedback or anything happening. Now, I mentioned the aspect ratio. Once you have more than one person on the call, at this point, we have the ability to click the aspect ratio, and we can choose between one to one, one to two, four to three, 16 by nine, and then of course we have the default. This is also true for the mobile application. So for example, we can choose one, 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 two, four by three, 16 by nine, or default. Now I wanna to quickly touch upon screen sharing and really specifically when you might consider using one option over the other. Let's say that I wanted to share my screen but let's say that somebody was only really interested in one thing. So I'm gonna temporarily pull up the Pro L limiter. Now, if I go to the screen sharing options in my actual computer, I have the option to share my entire screens. But if I shared the entire screen, that might be a little too cluttered for the mobile application. So I'm going to click Window, and in this case, instead of choosing the entire screen, I'm just going to choose one insert. So for example, if I play this now, we are just sharing the Pro L. And if I go back to making sure that the Studio One is in focus, notice over here that Pro L is the only thing being shared. Now I can look in the mobile application and I can see that the limiter is being shared. Okay, so let's stop screen sharing momentarily. And let's also kill our microphone again. So that is the basic setup. Also with respect to talkback, when you are playing and the high quality audio is streaming, all of the mics are automatically muted so you don't have to worry about anything. And this is when you would consider maybe using the um, option to kind of like raise your hand if you need to get anybody's attention. So this is pretty convenient, being able to have a way that you can dial into a call on a mobile device. It's very easy to dial into a session, even if you're on the run. You could be traveling, you could be at lunch, you could be on a break at work, taking a coffee break or something. It's very, very easy to do. Now I want to share another method. So what I'm going to do is temporarily, let's close this and let's go back to the plugin and we'll make sure that we have copied the invite. I'm actually going to join in now on a browser. So we're gonna to go to a new tab over here and I'm going to paste the link that we have over here. This is going to allow me to give access to the camera. We will click allow. We will also need to do the same for the microphone. This is something I have set up that I have to give permission of every single time in this system. So now I am purposely gonna make sure that I'm not setting these to anything that can be, that can cause feedback loops or anything, but we can say MH guest and I'm gonna say uh, desktop. We'll make sure that we spell this correctly. And then in terms of the devices, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using something that isn't going to be causing any feedback. So we'll use Sphere 64 and Sphere 64. Now I'm going to join this session. So in this case, we have the exact same setup that we do on the mobile situation, where we can adjust the high quality stream. We can also mute the high quality stream altogether. 
And then the level that we are listening to of any talkback is fixed, and that would be based upon how loud we have our headphones or how loud we have that output. Now, here we have a lot of different things that are happening at the same time. And of course, the same options apply if I wanted to toggle to, for example, 1 to 2 or 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 or the default setting, whatever we need to do, the same things apply over here. Also, I can temporarily kill my video and then take note that in the mobile application, this has gone from my actual image to just my initials. Maybe this makes a little bit more sense in terms of what we're looking at here. Also, we can do the same thing with respect to screen sharing. As long as you have enabled this in your Mac OS preferences, I could share this screen. Now, in this case, if I share my entire screen, for example, maybe I'll share a completely different desktop. If I share this, this shows on the mobile device. And also, if I go back into Studio One, we could actually double click this window to expand it to full size. And now what I'm seeing is the full screen from somebody else on a desktop application. I'm seeing my camera and then I'm seeing whoever is in here on the mobile application. So lots of different ways that we can communicate and lots of different ways that we can share information. Let me temporarily toggle out of this. Let's actually stop our screen sharing and let's close this for a moment. So now if we move back into Studio One, I'm gonna double click this window to resize it. So this is a really awesome and useful way to be able to communicate and coordinate with people, whether they're on mobile situations, iPads, iPhones, Android devices, smartphones, anything that has a supported browser, or whether they're on a desktop on a supported web browser. As long as they have a decent connection, they can link into this call. Now, at this point, we've been basically listening to a stereo mix. Anything that we're sending in terms of the audio, we have two channels over here, and we have two channels in the mobile application as well. That being said, authentic audio is not just limited to two-channel audio. So I'm going to temporarily close this window and this plugin as well. Now this session is active and I have three users on this session at this current time. But in this session, which is actually a Dolby Atmos session, I've been basically sending a binaural mix over authentic audio. But let's say that I wanted to set up something as multi-channel. I'm gonna to go to authentic audio here for a moment. Let's start a new session. I wouldn't necessarily have multiple sessions running at the same time. I would most likely only have one session, but let's start a new session and keep in mind that I have actually placed authentic audio on the main outs. Now these main outs, they could be a 5.1 mix bus format or they could be 7.1.2. If I start this session now, if I was to press play, Take note of the channel width in terms of how many channels are playing. And also temporarily, I'm gonna just kill the stereo. So now you can see we have our left, right, our center, our LFE and our left surround and our right surround. If I was to change this file format, maybe I would change this to 7.1 and also I will change my own speakers to 7.1. Now we are going to be outputting a 7.1. So this is incredibly useful because essentially what this means is that we're not just limited to stereo audio. Furthermore, if we were working on something like a Dolby Atmos setup, which could be 7.1.2 or 7.1.4, if you were collaborating with a team and you had multiple people that had multi-channel speaker environments that were set up, if you wanted to get somebody's feedback on a mix, we could actually open up the session, instantiate authentic audio, send them the link, all they have to do is open it in a supported web browser. And if they have some sort of system, like for example, a multi-channel interface, or maybe they're using ground control sphere, they could be giving us real time feedback on a Dolby Atmos mix in real time. No need to export anything, no need to print anything. And then also we could be sending them the binaural if we wanted to. Now I'm doing this from a DAW, which makes the most sense in terms of instantiating a plugin on your outputs, but also keep in mind that this is something that can be used in ground control sphere. We could actually use this on the inputs to send it to somebody if we wanted to bring them in on a video call. In addition to that, you could also be using this in an NLE, any software application that allows you to run plugins. And the things to keep in mind with Authentic Audio is that the whole entire interface and the whole entire GUI is tied to this one plugin. 
Everything that we need is tied to one plugin, and then we have the ability to open up the display, and we have this floating window, we have all of our screen sharing, and everything like that is available, all with instantiating one plugin. And then we have access to any cameras or anything that's available on our system. So that is Authentic Audio by Ginger Audio, a really fantastic option for anybody who needs to collaborate, share high quality video and audio, have talkback, dial people in on mobile devices or desktops, a fantastic option to use for the collaboration process. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.